Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. What up YouTube? It's your boy Jermaine back with another video. This video I want to talk about this Southeast Asia um, trip that I just got back on and I went to a handful of countries and I just want to just go over the trip and just talk about a couple things that really stood out maybe things I didn't talk about as much in my vlogs and maybe things that I did talk about in my vlogs that I can just bring up and just things that I didn't like things that I like places that I like a lot places that I did not like so first off just because I don't like a place or just because I had a bad time does not necessarily mean I just write it off and say oh I never ever want to go back there a lot of times when I don't like a place there's a there's a reason why I don't like that particular place and let's just jump right into it so first off flying over to Hong Kong Hong Kong I stayed for a couple days Hong Kong was expensive it was very busy and whenever it started to rain in Hong Kong it was just really really difficult to walk because the streets are really narrow the sidewalks are really narrow and everyone has an umbrella so when you're walking down the sidewalk it's just really difficult to like walk when it's raining um one interesting thing i thought that was really cool about hong kong outside there are a lot of escalators and there are a lot of covered like pathways I, I guess there's a lot of covered pathways because they know it rains a lot but this is really awesome especially on a hot day when you know the sun's just beaming down and you're, you're walking underneath this covered pathway i was really digging that and also escalators they had escalators going up this like massive massive hill like i really wish san francisco had something similar to that but i get it san francisco is not built the same way that hong kong is but hong kong had some insane escalators like some of the biggest escalators i've ever seen in my life and they just go like straight up and they're, they're just really awesome but after staying in hong kong for a couple days i flew over to singapore now you know flying over to singapore i knew singapore was a very small country i knew singapore was a nice country but i really didn't know just how nice singapore was like i had no idea just how nice how mind-blowing this country was so as arriving to singapore i um flew on scoot airlines i really really like scoot airlines by the way if you are traveling in southeast asia hit up scoot airlines they're a budget airlines they have really good deals on flights but there's also a whole bunch of budget airlines in southeast asia that you can choose from but i really really like scoot airlines i think it is i don't know like air asia scoot airlines it, for for, a, for my Asian budget airlines, they're they're neck on neck. Now arriving in Singapore, I, first thing I noticed, wow, this airport looks it looks a little old school. You know, it's not the most ultra modern airport. Then I had to go through immigration, get my passport stamped, and I was like red flagged. I was like called off to the side. You know, this guy was like, hey, what are you doing here? How long are you here for? What do you do for a living back in the U.S.? How much money do you have? Where are you going? Where are you coming from? What are you doing here? So basically, I got questioned like crazy. This was, uh, this was pretty intense. This was probably one of the most intense like questioning I've had. I, I was going to the UK they were very very intense too but I didn't go to the UK on this trip so on this Singapore trip I was like definitely red flagged and you know I did have to show like extra paperwork and I was called off into this room but no big deal after that that only lasted for about 20 minutes after I clear immigration I take a train to this space um, capsule I was staying in this was space pod and I, I was really stoked about staying there so I went checked into that place and I thought that was really really cool but before I even got off of the train like as the train like left the underground station and I was able to look outside and see the country I noticed that man Singapore is incredibly beautiful this is the most beautiful country I've ever been to now there's different levels of beautiful um I, I would say thailand is very beautiful but thailand is very beautiful in nature and and things that are not man-made country like singapore is just mind-blowing i did not remember seeing any trash anywhere on the ground anywhere in singapore i did not remember seeing gum anywhere if i'm not mistaken gum is illegal in singapore um <laughs> gosh the cars are like just beautiful the buildings are beautiful the buildings are like state of the art i also did not see any potholes because i you know i ride electric skateboards and that's one thing i i, I pay attention to when i go to different places i look at look at the roads and see like are, are they like are they 
are they nice are they all paved are they all like messed up like the roads are in san francisco the roads in singapore really really nice so that was singapore i only stayed in the country of singapore for two days however singapore is a very very small country and singapore is kind of like hong kong it's more of on the expensive side it's very very business oriented but it's also more business casual let's talk about the people in singapore now this is one thing that just really stood out to me out of every asian country i've ever been to i would say that the people in singapore were the least friendliest by far like just like least friendliest by far like every time i would go to pay for things i noticed that you know there's like absolutely no small talk there's no conversation there's no i mean it's like people are just like just in their own world you know and there's no um there's not a lot of interaction it's one thing i did pick up in singapore quite a bit um i really like the food in singapore there are a lot of amazing food options singapore is also a very very rich country so there's a lot of food from the west a lot of american chains here there's also a lot of european chains and that's one thing i really really like about singapore like i was able to um find like amazing food i ended up going to um vegberg and it's a very small chain in california of uh, vegan food and they specialize in vegan burgers and i went there in singapore and i thought that was really really awesome and Singapore, now when I go back to Singapore, I would totally go back to Singapore. Singapore is just an amazing place. It is so beautiful. You guys should check out Singapore. Now, I wouldn't recommend staying there for a month because, like I said, it's a very small country. It's also expensive. But let's move on to Bali. So I took a quick flight over to Bali from, from Singapore. And the, my first thoughts of Bali was, wow, wow. As soon as you walk through immigration... This place is like crazy, man. Like there's just taxi drivers chasing you and, you know, coming after you. And like literally you, you, once you walk through immigration and you enter the country, like there are just people everywhere like trying to sell you stuff. There are people, you know, trying to sell you SIM cards, trying to get you to take a taxi, trying to get you to schedule a tour, trying to get you to, you know, uh, to take a shuttle van. Like there's just people just, just, just all in your face, like, like just wow what an experience like going to hong kong it wasn't like that at all also going to singapore it was nothing like that at all arriving to bali arriving to indonesia buddy they are just up in your face everybody is hustling they got something to sell you now what are my thoughts about bali honestly bali was my least favorite place it was, it was my least favorite place i thought that bali would be a really really good place to go um as a couple I really did not explore as much as maybe i could have bali is also one of those places that i think i probably should have stayed a month instead of uh i think i stayed for about nine days or eight days i should have stayed maybe a little bit longer but my thoughts about bali was there's a lot of people trying to sell you stuff all the time and that was just the thing that just stood out the most about Bali is there always there's always people trying to sell you stuff and it just gets so old after a while after a while it just gets really annoying like I'm sitting on the beach talking to this girl I just met and there's like someone trying to sell us stuff and then 10 minutes later there's you know another you know group of people trying to sell us stuff and then you don't want water you want beer you want Bali that was kind of my experience I kind of just really got annoyed with people trying to sell me stuff but I did stay at some really cool places when I stayed in Bali. I also met other um, travelers and I got to see other resorts, places that I would never stay at as a budget backpacker. And I also got to hang out at a lot of other cool resorts. So that was pretty nice. I met some really awesome people in Bali. Now, I kind of say that Bali was, it was kind of lonely up until like day five. And that's when I met like other people to hang out with up until day five like i was just kind of like hanging out by myself the the hostel that i was staying in it wasn't that busy at all like this i guess it was low season so it wasn't a lot of people like staying there and i wasn't in a dorm room so i wasn't able to meet other people so it was um it bali was it was a little bit different now in bali i did not rent a motorbike i hear that you should always rent a motorbike when you're in Bali because it, it is a very, very easy way to get around. But for me, I just I just don't typically like to rent like motorbikes or cars when I'm in foreign countries. And that that's pretty much my rule of thumb. If you ever want to go to Bali, don't take my word for it. Go. Like I just went and I just didn't have the, the, the best time ever. And I, I don't know. I've definitely seen better beaches and 
be- better better places or, or in in other parts of the world but anyway no I'm, I'm i'm really not trying to crap on bali but it just wasn't like out of all the places i've been to in asia it just wasn't it it was it's probably at the bottom of the list um yeah in indonesia and in bali like i kind of feel bad to i kind of feel bad saying this but this is a place that i would return like i would go back to bali like there's you know, it's not like i would never ever go back and i'm just gonna like talk about the next country because i feel like i'm just being really mean about bali but i had a really good time next country i flew from bali over to kuala lumpur this was really cool because i was able to <laughs> Um, so many people want to know, Jermaine, how much did you pay for the flight? Because I booked a flight. Um, this flight was, uh, it was a business class flight with the flat bed seats. Now, when I booked this flight, I was looking for a flight that would arrive in Kuala Lumpur in the daytime. Because I was, you know, was going to be vlogging the journey and I wanted to arrive in the daytime and stuff. So when I was looking for flights, all the flights were like 60 bucks. And this is like a two and a half hour flight. All the flights were 60 bucks. But they all arrived after dark, like 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. So I'm looking around, and I find this flight for $90 that arrives at 4 p.m. So I'm thinking, great, like, I'll just take this flight. I click on the flight, and it's business class with flatbed seats. That only costs $90. So if you guys seen that vlog, and if you want to know, like, Jermaine, how much did you pay? Because I don't think I ever... I ever I, I, I never said anything like in the video I never said how much it costs and I never wrote in the comments how much it costs that was only $90 and I, it, was, it was only $30 more than economy and it was so awesome like I got really really good vegan food on the flight I got access to the VIP lounge before the flight and then I also got to sleep vertical while flying on an airplane which is like the best thing ever well I, I guess more one of the best things ever well no let's say it's not the best thing ever but it's really really cool you have to experience it at some point of your life i fly over to kuala lumpur kuala lumpur welcome to malaysia welcome to a muslim country i didn't really put two and two together until day three i was staying there so the first couple days i was staying at this super sick like hostel this was like this hostel was expensive. It was like $40 a night for a dorm bed. Now, this is crazy expensive for Malaysia, by the way. Because um, after I left that place, I stayed at this other hostel and I got a private room. And that private room was like $17 a night. So that private room was like more than half of this dorm that I was staying in. But I really wanted to stay at this place because it was on the 28th floor. And it also had an infinity pool on the 37th floor. Basically, 28th floor and the 37th floor is the reason why I stayed there. And the beds, the beds were so incredibly comfortable that I, I really couldn't even sleep in it because I'm not used to sleeping on something that, that's so comfortable and so luxurious. Like, I, it, I'm used to sleeping on, you know, those, like, Ikea beds, you know, something that costs a couple hundred dollars. The guy that was running the hostel was, like, the nicest dude ever. And he said that the the mattresses cost like two thousand dollars or something like that. And I was thinking, well, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I sure hope nobody comes to here with bed bugs, yo. And that place was just so nice. And just hanging out on the pool on the uh, what thirty seventh floor and overlooking the Petron Towers was just amazing. It was just amazing. And then after that, I stayed there for a couple of days and I switched to another part of town, which was Chinatown. And this is when I discovered, wow, this is the month of Ramadan. So I would go to a restaurant and I'd walk in and I'm the only one sitting at the restaurant eating because this is a Muslim country and during the month of Ramadan, people who participate in Ramadan, they cannot drink water or eat food from sunup to sundown. And it's like crazy hot, yo. And I remember getting on this train. This was the saddest thing I've ever seen probably anywhere in the world, like outside of my own country. <laughs> um... But one of the saddest sights I've seen, I get on this train at about five o'clock, which is rush hour. And I look around and there's a, there's, it's like all women on the train, not all women, but a majority women on the train. There, there's definitely men on the train, but majority women. And it was crazy hot that day. I'm just chugging water all day. I probably had maybe eight bottles of water or something like that. I look around and to see the look on everyone's face because it's later in the day, the sun's about to set, 
and I'm pretty sure all these people are dehydrated. They're probably really, really hungry, and they have like two more hours to wait, and they can drink water, and they can eat food. And I got on that train and looked around, and man, I just never felt so fortunate, you know? I just, it, it just really made me, you know, traveling does stuff like that to you. Like, you, you may hear me say this in, in this video, me telling my experience, but when you go there and you see it for yourself, it, it'll stick with you in a different way. So I ended up staying in Kuala Lumpur for a couple more days, and I have to say that Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia were not, um, not my most favorite places either, but I would definitely return turn back to Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur, just the architect and the cost. They, I feel like the cost, the price, the, the the pricing, like how much things cost is like a really good deal in Kuala Lumpur. So I would definitely return back. I probably will return back, um, probably but maybe really soon. Now, from Kuala Lumpur, I went to Thailand. Now, this is my fourth time traveling to Thailand. Stayed in Bangkok for, my plan was to stay in Bangkok for three nights, ended up staying in Bangkok for like five nights. After staying in Bangkok, had already booked a flight from Chiang Mai to Hong Kong because I have a return flight leaving Hong Kong, traveling back to the US. So I was just putting it off going to Chiang Mai. I was just putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And at first I was gonna book a flight. The flight was gonna be 20 bucks, okay? And then I didn't book the flight and then all of a sudden the flight was $40 and this is for an hour flight. So it's $40 for an hour flight and then like $12 to get to the airport, maybe another $8 from the Chiang Mai airport to get to the hostel. So I'm thinking, look, let's just take the train. Let's take the overnight train. Took the overnight train and that was like $33 and then you, you have a place to stay for the night. So it kind of works out. Took the train. That was an amazing experience. Got to Chiang Mai. Honestly, I was putting off Chiang Mai because it's digital nomad capital. Okay, of the world for the most part. And there are a lot of YouTubers that live there. So I've just been putting it off and putting it off. I got to Chiang Mai and as soon as I left the train station, I found this vegan restaurant that was open. Walked in, ordered food. The food was amazing, okay? Went back and uh, checked into the hostel. This was really early because I had arrived um, on the train at like seven in the morning. I found that restaurant around eight, was at the hostel around 10. They were nice enough to let me check in at 10 a.m. instead of making me wait till like three. Ended up checking in, went back to that restaurant for lunch because the food was so good. I met this large group of Americans. Like basically, um, <laughs> this was like maybe 85% of the group were like African American Americans. And I'm like, dang, look at this. Like they, they all speak in English over here. I wonder what they got going on over there, over there. And I sat down and ate. And as I got ready to go, one of the girls walked over and introduced herself to me. And she said, hey, um, do you live in Chiang Mai? Or, or are you just traveling through? And I was just, you know, explaining to her, oh, yeah, I'm just traveling through. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. And she invited me to come to, um, like, a, a, a dinner event going on. So I went over to the dinner event. And after that, it was an after party. And I got to go to the after party. I had just arrived at Chiang Mai. I didn't know anyone. And all of a sudden, I got a posse. I got a crew. I'm hanging out with all these people. And the bad part about it, I was only in Chiang Mai for two days. For two days, I was in Chiang Mai. And what was my favorite place out of all out of all the trips now now after Chiang Mai I went back to Hong Kong I was only in Hong Kong for one day didn't really do much that one day and the next day I went back to the US but now let's go back and talk about Chiang Mai Chiang Mai was by far my favorite place on the trip because it had amazing vegan food this is one of the like vegan capitals of the world by the way too <laughs> but amazing vegan food I, I found this vegan steak there that was so amazing it'll make you want to slap your mama not literally because I, I would not slap my mama just because I had some really really good vegan steak but you know I think you guys get what I'm saying but uh, it was just um I just had a really 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 good experience in Chiang Mai Chiang Mai is a place that I really want to go back to and I probably will go back there probably go back maybe later this year I just had a blast in Chiang Mai it's a place that I, I really really like it's a really good place to make connections especially if you want to be a digital nomad there's all sorts of there's all sorts of things going on there and especially if you're like a black American or if you're just an American in general it's just it's basically full of Americans I remember hanging out with um, this other American that I met 
and we're sitting in this restaurant and i said man those girls are definitely from california like for, yeah like i can tell they're from freaking southern california because they don't talk like that in the north and as we were leaving um we you know we you know exchange words and they're like oh hey how you guys doing and they actually ended up inviting us to some party you know they were like hey you should come with us later at seven o'clock it's gonna be this bar crawl and you guys should come and we actually were not able to go to that bar crawl because we were going to some other event that <laughs> it was just a really I had a really awesome time in Chiang Mai but anyway I just thought I would make a video talking about my Southeast Asia trip because it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun like I had a blast and huh, guys traveling will open up your world it will enhance your life and it's something that I really really want more Americans to do like I really really want more people from my country to travel and I want people from all countries but especially my country because we just don't travel that much but anyway guys thanks a lot for watching I just wanted to make a video just talking about the experiences that I had in this this Southeast Asia adventure this at yeah this freaking amazing trip but yeah thanks a lot for watching like comment subscribe peace out